Joe's behind here somewhere, trimming down. <laughs> hey folks, welcome back to the cabin. We've got a real treat for you today. We've got a whole bunch of new walls. It's really exciting stuff. First up, let me show you what we got up to yesterday. We're actually using metal boxes on the walls which have got OSB on because they're 25 mil deep. We can fix them to the OSB and then cut out the holes. I haven't got any metal boxes here, um, but I obviously they're the side. So I've cut, or oh, I've marked up these two. I'm going to cut them out, pop the cables through, and then we can fit them afterwards. Someone quite rightly mentioned about the fact that we're using nine and a half mil plasterboard. There's obviously a little bit more give in it. So in areas where we've got sockets, if they were just in a stud wall and you were using the drywall, the plastic boxes, there might be a little bit too much give here, especially if you've got two next to each other like this. But in this situation and all of the living area where the most heavily used sockets will be, our back boxes will be on the board behind and in which case all the pressure is going onto that board, we're not kind of pushing and denting, uh, you know, there's no, going to be no give in the plasterboard. So we've done the whole of the west wall now. That's it. Right, we're gonna do a bit of a, an afternoon slash evening DIY session. We've just gotta press on and catch, carry on with the um, walls now because we're getting so close to the point where we can start decorating and all that sort of stuff. And now we've got a little bit of light in here, just temporary lighting, means we can work into the evenings. So the girls are sat down there watching a film in one of the bedrooms. Joe's behind here somewhere, trimming down. <laughs> Uh, we finished off this west wall earlier, as you saw in the time lapse, and now we're going to get this wall here done. This wall here is actually going to be all full height units all the way to the ceiling pretty much. So the wall is not exposed, it, we're just doing it to tidy it up basically. So it's about two and a half sheets, and it means that then at least we've got somewhere for a few spurs to be put into and things like that. Yeah? No, no, it just needs to be right over. Yeah, I know, but you're ready for me to lift. So yeah, 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 yeah. Quick, my neck! I know. <laughs> Not my neck!
Right, we're, we're losing a little bit of light, but I'm gonna start cutting back some of these walls uh, where we just overshot either the end of the wall or in this case, the window. That's a full width window. First job this morning is to cut the end of this stud wall off. Just run a knife down and snap it. We were going with a sort of cladded, timber cladded wall effect on this area. But by the time you price it up, it's uh, I think 250 pounds for both of those stud walls. And it, everything's adding up now. Uh, and we want to try and keep it close to budget, whatever that was. And then part two of today is going to be insulating all of these stud walls here between the bedrooms or the bedrooms in the hallway. We've still got our mood lighting up. So apologies, the white balance might be jumping around a bit now. Um, but let me give you a bit of a walk around because some of these rooms are almost done. So the end bedroom is all ready. The girls had a bit of a film night in here, believe it or not. This bedroom's pretty much there. And we're gonna put some extra battens in on the roof, uh, on the ceiling where we know our lighting is gonna go because it's always good to have plenty to anchor to when you fit any light fitting. So this room, I think we can pretty much park until we come around to plaster. Here's an outward opening door into the toilet. And then we just got like a vanity and toilet bit going right on the back wall there. We just packed out with a bit of OSB here. Uh, this is where we had an original entrance coming into a different room, but we've blocked that up. So we've got a little bit more trim to do there. And then out in the main room, uh, it's, it's getting there. This is obviously the backing for the kitchen units on the other side. On this side, we're gonna have a lot of heavy duty hooks and boots and stuff like that. So I think we're either gonna panel that and or clad it or potentially use some of those bathroom panels just so that's a really kind of nice neat wall that we can just wipe down. So if you come in from the front door, this is just gonna be the mud room. So boots off, wet coats hanging up, that sort of thing. eagle-eyed amongst you will notice we are short of a few noggins here. Basically this wall was going to be clad in a horizontal kind of shiplap style or tongue groove and for that reason we, we were focusing on getting the uprights in the right position. These were just equidistant to split it up. It turns out now because we're plasterboarding that these don't match up with plasterboard so I'm going to now put in some extra blocks should have done it beforehand, but we were just kind of getting on with it whilst there were two of us here. So that's my first job, cut those blocks in there, and then we should be able to do the same from this side. One thing we're yet to discuss on the build is the internal insulation. This is for acoustic rather than thermal and it's just to give a bit of a barrier between rooms. So we've done that on both sides of the hall and in between the living rooms and through to the rest of the bedrooms. It's simply rock wool or mineral wool and the sheep's wool that we had left over, which we've pulled apart by kind of delaminating the layers to give us about 50 millimeters of insulation. If you pack it in too tight and try and cram it into the studs, you can actually end up popping the screws off over time because you're trying to trap it in. Whereas it, all it really needs to be is 50 to 60 mil tacked in with staples and then that's just fine. And you already tell the difference as soon as it's in. Okay, so we're on the home straight today. We had to order a few more boards. We ordered five, I think we might need six, but hey, uh, we've got sheets here ready so all we've got left is this side of the hallway everything else 
it's pretty much done. All the small rooms are done. The down or well, downstairs toilet, the little toilet's all downstairs. Uh, that's all finished now. So it's just going over this OSB. Basically, we've got all the loft insulation up here and on there, but they stop in the center of the truss at the end of each truss. So there's kind of a, a point in the middle which there's no way of overlapping the insulation over the join. So for that reason, we've just insulated up tight. In hindsight, maybe we could have tried to use some insulation bats or even rigid insulation in against each half, but it would have been, the way we built it, it would have been quite hard to do. And that sees an end to all of the plasterboard, pretty much, that's going into the cabin. There are a few little bits in the bathroom away from any of the fittings and fixtures that we're thinking we might go with just some plasterboard in there. Otherwise, the rest of the walls are going to be either feature walls, panelling or timber cladding. Next up, it's time to rummage through storage and see if I can find my old trowels and hopefully give this taping and joint game a go. I've only done skimming in the past with a couple of small patches where I've done a simple tapered joint but this will be the first time for doing a few rooms so we'll see how that goes apart from that we're going to leave it there thank you for watching remember if you can do it yourself and we'll see you next time